Today, let's talk about the biggest mistake people make with prong collars. Prong collars are a super beneficial tool that can help most every dog learn a proper communication and proper obedience and compliance for their human. But misused or used improperly, it can be a tool that does not benefit the dog at all. In fact, it can be a tool that hurts the dog. Using the prong collar properly will give you an immense amount of information and immense amount of advantage in training your dog. In this video, we're going to address some of the common mistakes people make with prong collars. One, prong collars must be fitted properly. They must sit snugly on your dog's neck and not rotate around. Most people think putting a prong collar on too loose is a bigger advantage than putting it on too tight. That is a fallacy. If the prong collar is too loose, you're going to have an effect much like this on your dog. In other words, if the prong collar is too loose, you'll see the prongs ride all along the skin of the dog's neck. And when this happens, it starts to cause abrasion or even slight scarring. You want the prong collar to sit snugly on your dog's neck like this, so that when you deliver your correction, it instantaneously gives the dog the information, but there's no chance of the prong collar sliding from side to side. Remember, the prong collar movement is the cause for most injuries while using a prong collar. The prong collar should sit very snugly on the dog's neck, and when it's on, it should be as high as possible. The, the collar will occasionally start to slide down, but make sure it sits as high as possible behind the dog's ears, fitted snugly. And when you're attaching the prong collar to your leash, you have a choice. You can either attach it to what we call the live ring, which is here, which gives the, the collar a cinching action, like a choke chain, or you can attach the prong collar to what we call the dead ring. And the dead ring is a term we use when we attach the prong collar to both rings like this. And when we do this, it gives a very blunt correction. My choice is always to use the live ring because it's very similar to a martingale, which means it gives the dog a correction and immediately releases and gives the dog more information and quicker ability to comply to the obedience or the correction. Two, people use a prong collar without a backup. That means they only hook their leash into the prong collar. And what can happen here and does quite often is the dog starts to twist the collar or the collar becomes uh, weak or compromised. And when the dog pulls, the prong collar comes off and you lose your dog. And if you gave your dog a firm correction and the prong collar comes off, your dog will be suspicious about coming back. Here, let me put this back on. Goofy, watch out. Good oh boy. So when I use a prong collar, I always make sure that the snap of my leash is tied back into the ring of a backup collar, which can be a, a martingale collar, it can be a flat collar, or it can be just a, a regular chain collar like this. Three. If you use a prong collar and the dog is next to you and you're constantly correcting the dog on the prong collar next to you, the dog is starting to see an aversion or a correction and a reason not to be next to you. So the closer the dog is to you and you're using this correction on the dog, the dog's only choice in escape avoidance is to try to get further away from you. The proper way to use a prong collar is at a distance. That means correct the dog when they're in a position that you want to correct. Hey guys, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, subscribe to this channel, be a part of the dog training family, and learn the best dog training anywhere. There's tons of videos on my channel and tons new coming every day. So for example, if the dog is away from you and I put pressure on the dog here, the dog's decision will be to get closer. Here, here, here. You'll see he keeps getting closer because he's getting away from the pressure of the prong. If the dog doesn't know this, which is going to lead us to number four, the dog won't know what to do. Number four, using a prong collar before you teach your dog how the prong collar works is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. Check my other videos on leash pressure and you'll see what I'm talking about. If you want to see the rest of this video, run over to robertcabral.com, check out my online dog training for the best training available anywhere.